Regarding privacy within the marriage, you talked about uh, transparency. What are the limits? What if others, like the in-laws, ask their spouse not to share a halal but private conversation? Uh, I saw that question. I was a little confused by the context. Um, the in-laws are speaking to whom? And I, I, it was a bit confusing for me. But in general, I would say that, as I mentioned during the talk, you know, there are certain... Um, things that are sacred in the, in, in the marital relationship. And the bond that we have with our spouses is really important to maintain. As we know, Iblis seeks to destroy the, the family because if he destroys the husband and the wife, he destroys the family, he destroys the community, he has this ripple effect. So we have to be on guard and know his tactics. And having secrecy and these duplicitous natures where I have my life and you have your life and we don't ever really have transparency, I think is a very dangerous game to play. And it comes from a lot of these modern ideas about you know women and men having to always have everything as mashallah dr haifa beautifully alluded to it's always these po political ideas that come into our marriages we have to use hikmah we have to use wisdom and i think just having some some uh, basic you know uh, understandings between you and every couple is going to have to decide what that means for my for example my marriage my husband, any day, any time of the day, it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the night, in the morning, if he wants to see my phone, marhaba, here you go. There's no, oh no, you can't look at my stuff, it's private, he doesn't have access to my passcode. I just don't believe that that's healthy, so he can get into my phone and I can go into his phone. I have all his access to his emails, he can go into my email, he can do whatever he wants. But he knows respectfully there are certain things that are very private, and I tell him because I have sisters that message me that for that reason, please do not touch these things because it's confidence that I have of other women or other people. But everything else between him and I, there is this understanding that there's no privacy. So I think you know, really having a culture of mutual respect, of um, honoring one another's preferences. Some people might have more, you know, things that they are, that they want just from experiences. You know, I, I know people who've come out of really unhealthy relationships, so they might need, they might need a, a little bit more, you know, in their current relationship because of their past. So just being compassionate and seeing people where they are and having open dialogue, I think, will remove a lot of the doubt and suspicion and all of those things of shaitan and um, you know that he wants to you know create between the couple so just have open communication that's that as far as in-laws and other people I mean again we have to be very clear about boundaries um, within our, our marriages and that goes for for anybody that's not involved in the marriage you can always seek advice but to have people meddling in your marriage um, I think is also a very dangerous uh, thing. So we should, you know, be very clear that we will, as a couple, for example, if we have um, problems, that we have one person, or, or at least there's a due process of how we're going to, you know, mediate our problems. But it's not this kind of, you know, open, um, haphazard way of, of, uh, of letting anybody into the marriage. Because there's things that are very private. And once you lose trust, again, this is how shaitan, uh, sows those seeds of discord. So these agreements, a lot of the stuff can be taken care of with premarital counseling. So please, if you're not married, go into premarital counseling because experts like Mashallah, Dr. Rania, and others who are in the field of either mental health or do this as a professional, um, this is part of their expertise, they will guide you on how to have these contracts that are mutually beneficial. That is the key. It has to be mutually beneficial. That's very different than equal, okay? And those words, I know, are interchanged, but mutually beneficial is rooted in respect. It's rooted in, in again, taqwa and, in, 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 uh, inshallah, in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above the nafs. And if we, I think, conduct ourselves in that respectful way, we will have agreements um, with our spouses that uh, will not leave anyone feeling that they, you know, have a need to hide or have a need to, to, uh, to do things any other way. So.